Good evening, this is Pastor John, and the title of my sermon is Love Thy Enemies. Really? Yes, really, really, it's the truth. We are called by the Bible to love our enemies and pray for those who offend us. There's a, a thing been going on lately where people are thinking you don't have to love your enemy, you don't have to pray for them. After all, they've wronged us, and uh, it's okay to hold bitterness and uh, hatred and everything else against them. But the whole truth is we are called to love our enemies and to pray for them. This is what Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount. Love your enemies. I want to pick up in uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 5, uh, verse 43, and I'm going to read to 48. These are the words of Jesus Christ. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love only them that love you, what reward shall ye have? Do not even the publicans do the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Amen. The words of Jesus Christ. We are called to love our enemies. And um, it's pretty simple there. Uh, we are not called to hold grudges. We are not called to um, be bitter or have hatred. I want to tell you a story. Um, when I was little, I had done a sermon on this before. Uh, I was about uh, seven or eight years old, and uh, I was in need of a coat. And uh, my mom and dad didn't have a lot of money. And uh, my ma was in need of a coat also. And the sacrifice was to be that little Johnny was going to get a coat. And um, I was so proud that day as I went to school with my new coat on. And, um, excuse me, uh, knowing that my parents, you know, had done this for me and cared that much about me. And... Um, as I walked to school, I was just thanking Jesus, uh, you know, that he had given me this coat. And when I got to school and I went in line, as, you know, you had to wait to go into the building. The usual punk kids who were always teasing me started, you know, pushing and shoving and saying, uh, look at Pusateri, he's got a new coat. Uh, look at how funny he looks. You know, and before I knew it, I was falling to the ground and my coat got dirty and it got ripped. Um, my heart was broken because um, I felt like I had let my parents down because uh, they had sacrificed to give me this coat. And um, here I am. I couldn't defend myself good enough to where the coat couldn't be ripped. And uh, I let bitterness start growing in my heart that day in school and, uh, you know, thinking, uh, Jesus, take vengeance on these people. You know, look what they've done. They hurt me. Um, all of these feelings went through my heart and my soul. And when I was going home that day, you know, tears started welling up in my eyes saying, what am I going to say to my parents, you know? And uh, I remember walking to the door with tears in my eyes and my uh, cold ripped and uh, tattered and uh, looking at my ma who had sacrificed and not got a coat so I could have one and um, immediately you know uh, my parents understood what was going on and my ma took the coat off and you know washed it in the uh, wash machine and you know stitched it up as good as she could and I said, Ma, you know, why did these kids do this? Why are they so evil? I hate them. I want vengeance on them. 
everything they'd done to me, everything they'd done. And she told me the story that I just read to you, that if we don't forgive, we're not going to be forgiven. And then she told me, you know, how much Jesus loves us and um, everything that they'd done to him and um, how he had an agape love for us. At the time, I didn't understand what agape love meant, but uh, later on when I became older, I looked it up. And uh, agape love means the most giving love, the most patient love, and the most sacrificial love a person can have. This is what Jesus Christ practiced, and this is what kind of love we are supposed to have for our enemies. Everything they done to Jesus, you know, she told me, they, you know, spit upon him, they made fun of him, they drove nails through his hands, they uh, hung him on a cross, they crucified him, and yet he forgave them. And if our Lord and Savior who died on that cross, not only for um, these people who hated him, but for a sinner like me, so I could get to heaven, how could I do any less? How can I do any different? I really thought on this and I prayed. And the next day when I went to school, um, I said, Jesus, give me the strength to deal with this. And um, as I approached the kids, uh, they said, oh, look at he got his coat fixed and everything. And I said, you know what? I forgive you because Jesus would have forgiven you. And of course, you know, they made a joke about that and got some belly laughs out of that. And, uh, but I think that they learned a lesson that day. I think they learned a lesson. Uh, somehow I gave them a piece of Jesus and I wasn't afraid to share it. And I wasn't afraid to let my hate and bitterness and uh, anger towards them go. Because the whole truth is, if we carry this hate and this anger and this bitterness, and we do not love our enemies and forgive them, we're only really hurting ourselves. For um, it makes us something that is foreign to God, something that is foreign to Jesus, uh, something that is foreign to the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. Um, recently, there was something... Um, happened in the White House. I'm sure you all heard about it with uh, the president and stuff. I'm not taking no sides on this. I'm not getting to pol political or politics on this. All I'm saying is what the Bible says. We are to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. I don't know about you, but the Christian um, mantra, if you call it, is that God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but has, shall have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world should be saved through him. I'm not here to condemn anybody to hell. It's not my job. I'm not anybody's judge. It's my job just to shine the light of Jesus through me. And... Uh, to try to point my enemies to the light, to Jesus Christ, so that they can find eternal life through him. If I had to base salvation through myself, I would be going to hell. I'm a, a sinner. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Who am I to judge anybody? Who am I to say that... Um, I can't love my enemies. So uh, just think about that. I mean, Jesus was adamant about this. This was Jesus' agape love for the world. He um, shed his blood and died for us. Um, this was his teaching. This wasn't a suggestion by him. Or this wasn't a, like, a, you know, well, certain people could do it and certain people can't. No, this was a command. This was a command by the Master, by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And if he did it, we are called to do it. No excuses. No excuses. We are called to do this. So um, if you're dealing with some kind of hurt or bitterness in your life over this, I just ask that you let it go and let God take over. Give it to the Father. 
Give it to the Son. Give it to the Holy Ghost. Let them do a work in you and draw you back to Him. And just let it go. Let God take over. So uh, to next time, this is Pastor John saying peace, love, and joy to you all. Keep your eyes on your Creator and not on the situations you're in. And remember, any situation you're in, God is in control of it. He is with you. He loves you. Check you out later. God bless you.